I am now a creator of worlds. A literal Minecraft god. You know, now that I've been freed from the shackles of my highly ambitious ideas, which I've underestimated twice, resulting in this abomination of an upload schedule, I've realized that remaking games has sort of trapped my creativity. So I want to make something more original, more spontaneous. The Genima, a space game, because, uh... Space. I honestly have no idea what it'll be about exactly just yet, but I do know there are planets in space, so we can start from there. But first, we need to make space itself. So I made a resource pack that removes sky fog and clouds at night when you enable night vision. That way, everything is black and you can only see the stars. Well, we'll take it. This'll do for now. While I code the planets, my wonderful modeler Satori and Nevin are gonna work on what they look like from outer space. And let me tell you, you've all been fooled. The Earth isn't round like we all thought. It's not flat either. No, 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 no. It is a cube. And we've created a one-to-one -one model of this cube, or the Earth, in Minecraft. And it even spins. Look, it's so accurate, it's even got an actual tur- til tilt. Turd. Tilt. Minecraft 1.20.5 actually introduced quite a few handy features like scale and even gravity that we can use for this project. So the idea is with the scale attribute, I'm gonna make the players really small and the planets really big. So it gives you the illusion of being far away from a planet when in reality, you're just a couple blocks away. Anyways, I do this in hopes of solving some rendering issues so you can see planets from what seems like really far away without them despawning. You know, for the whole immersion thing. Oh, and by the way, I'm using a new library called Mindstorm to make my server. But Nimsy, it says Mindstorm, not Mindstorm. Shh, they spelt it wrong. I'm not gaslighting you. You think I'm gaslighting you. If you didn't already know, for the last few years, I've been scripting with a plugin called Denizen. But after my last video, a viewer, more like a missionary by the name of Cosmic, I know, crazy because the whole space thing, convinced me to move on from Denizen and use Mindstorm. And like many of you guys out there, he likes to see me suffer. Because believe it or not, I don't know Java, and Mindstorm is not just in Java, but it also literally has none of Minecraft's code. Like, if I were to open a chest right now, it wouldn't work because I would have to code it myself. The upside is it's fast, like really fast. So Cosmic and another Mindstorm dev, I am, will be the two viewers of my coding streams that'll help me out and show me the ropes. They'll probably also be uh, my only viewers. Thanks guys. Anyways, let's make the moon. I, I know it's not a planet, but because this will be our first planet, we need to learn about something called incoming big word, I know, scary, procedural generations. You see it everywhere in games like Terraria, No Man's Sky, and obviously in Minecraft's very own terrain generation. It's basically an algorithm to figure out, in our case, where to put the blocks in Minecraft. You want to know why it took me over four months to make this video? because I was busy playing Elden Ring, studying Minecraft's terrain generation and how to code in Java while learning about Mindstorm on top of that. What did you think I was gonna say? There's actually a cool video on YouTube by a real Mojang dev that explains to an extent how Minecraft's terrain gen works. And believe me, I had to watch this 40 minute video on repeat to even vaguely understand what they're doing, especially when it comes to the whole spline graph shit. Anyways, we'll come back to that later because the moon has a simple landscape just with craters here and there. So to start off, I just applied some basic noise. Noise, to summarize without losing your attention, is um, a random value between negative one and one. It's technically not random because it's based on normally sine waves and these things called octaves that make the transition between the random values more natural to make these height maps that I base my Y values on. I, I, I didn't lose you there, did I? So now that we have some sort of terrain going, we need craters. Making the moon reminded me of a video I watched a while back by Sebastian Lake, where he made procedurally generating moons in Unity. So I thought maybe I could use the same math or at least similar math that he showcased in his video to make my craters. Only problem was I'm not the brightest at math. So my two viewers had to watch me suffer for weeks struggling to create these crater shapes based on simple calculus concepts. If you haven't already realized I'm, <laughs> I'm barely passing calculus. But, but I, I swear it's the teacher. Anyways, one of those viewers, Surprisable, actually cooked up this cool graph on Desmos to demonstrate sort of what I'm trying to do. With this, we can adjust the crater width, depth, rim height, pretty much everything we need with a couple math formulas. Yeah, um, I 
didn't end up using any of that math, but you know what? I actually learned a lot in my first month, like how to randomly place structures throughout the world, which I can use for my next planets too. Plus, the hiccups along the way actually generated some pretty crazy looking shapes. So now that we've got the terrain and craters going, if we just turn on our night vision and set the gravity to like, I don't know, 0.02, it sort of looks like you're in space now. On the moon. Fuck yeah. Next, I want to make a lava planet, sort of like that one from Spy Kids. Please tell me I'm not the only one who remembers Spy Kids. I'm thinking lava rivers, volcanoes, geysers. That's it. Lava rivers. In my early research phase with noise and procedural generation, I actually discovered if you got the absolute value of our noise and did some tweaking, you could actually end up with terrain that kind of looks like cracks, which is exactly what I'm going for with the lava rivers. So here's what it looks like with obsidian and lava in my cracks. Wait, volcanoes. Thanks to the pain I endured from learning how to make craters for the moon, I actually used some really similar logic to create these volcanic shapes throughout the planet. And on top of that, I sprinkled some extra noise to make it seem more organic and a little block transition from obsidian to basalt. I figured at this point, I might as well make a custom biome to fit the whole planet vibe. So I changed up the sky colors and even added ambient noises, specifically the basalt deltas noises. And let me tell you, the basalt deltas noises sound good, but it has this one screeching sound that makes your ears bleed. All right, so now that we have our rivers, volcanoes, and a little aesthetic going, I want the planet to feel alive. So I added volcanic eruptions. Each of these volcanoes also have a couple earthquakes before they actually erupt that shake your screen when you're close enough. Then when it erupts, it shoots out these big magma blocks using block displays. Not too shabby if I do say so myself. Geysers. I tried out a bunch of different little geyser designs, but none of them really looked good. So I ended up literally just putting a hole in the ground that spews out particles that launch you in the air. I call it geyser juice. No, seriously, that, that's what I call it in the code. While I was at it, I also made the players bounce on lava, sort of like how they do in Mario 64. You know, maybe procedural generation isn't as bad as I thought. All things considered, making the lava planet actually went by pretty smoothly. You know, I think I might actually be able to fly through the rest of this video. I have not seen sunlight in nine days. My orange juice supply, it's running dry. What? is a shower. There's actually a cool video on YouTube by a real Mojang dev that explains to an extent how Minecraft's terrain gen works. Remember this? I tried figuring out how it worked. And before I explain what I got out of this, I just wanted to take this moment to appreciate how insane Minecraft's terrain generation really is. I never realized how much work was put into it by the devs to have anyone even attempting to make similar terrain gen withstand the insufferable pain of your neural pathways rearranging to understand exactly what they're trying to do. I now look outside and see landscapes as numbers. This is gonna get kind of nerdy, but it's cool, I swear. Basically, Minecraft takes noise values, or again, the random numbers between negative one and one, and applies a height to it. For example, if our noise value is negative one, we could have our height be like 50 and so on. Seems simple enough right? That's not the problem I was having. Obviously, our boy Henrik didn't show Minecraft's code. Instead, he showed graphs with the values that they've set with missing numbers. There are three types of graphs the terrain follows. Continentalness, peaks and valleys, and erosion, which all have their own random noise values. You can see for yourself when you press F3 in a single player world, which I found pretty cool. And I'm trying to create something similar to Minecraft's terrain gen to, you know, get a better understanding of how it works. So I took screenshots of these graphs and counted each pixel by hand to sort of reverse engineer these values. Surely they've made these graphs proportional enough and to scale for me to do this, right? Surely. After a few hours of this brain rot, this was my result. Clearly, something is wrong. And that's when I realized I don't think there's only three graphs. If you look at the slides carefully, only a specific node points to a graph, which makes me think there could be way more than three graphs. Cause you know, there's multiple nodes and this is where things got confusing. Oh, and don't even get me started with how biomes work. I don't even know myself. I, I, I don't think I wanna know, but I did get something out of this. Using an oversimplified version of their graphs and tables, I could at least create cool mountains and oceans and continents with some variation. With this, we can move on to our next planet. I really like the floating islands area in Pandora from Avatar 2. So I sort of use that as a starting point for what I want the planet to be like. Everything under the islands are just gonna be the ocean and some really tall mountains. Then I just use the crater code again and pretty much 
much inverted it to get these little islands going. It wasn't bad, but I just felt like something was missing. The next day, I'm not even kidding, I had a dream. A dream that actually showed me what was missing with the planet and how I would code it. Again, I'm not kidding. My viewers were concerned, but to me, this was a godsend. So I just coded what I remembered from my dream and it ended up looking like this. Yeah, no, that was a shader made by the wizard himself, Godlander. It actually looked like this, which is not bad. So I guess follow your dreams? Literally? Legally? Now that we have the islands and some sort of mainland, I want to make the planet feel more alive like I did with the lava planet. I don't know why I'm keep on I keep on doing this with my hands. It's kind of like, what am I doing? Obviously in the future, I'm gonna add custom mobs and structures, but for now, I'm gonna add ponds. I feel like these would be some really nice, relaxing fishing spots. I also wanted to add waterfalls. Just one problem, water doesn't flow in Mindstorm. Cause remember, we have none of Minecraft's code. And that's when my buddy, I am the coding genius, hopped in a VC with me and probably lost some brain cells trying to help me figure out how to add water spread. Oh God. Oh God. I am sick, so now we have ponds and waterfalls, but what about trees? Apparently trees are really hard to make procedurally, but I am actually ported over this tree gen library that uses math patterns called fractals to generate their trees in Mindstorm. Mindstorm, sorry, fuck. It's honestly a pain to work with just because of the sheer amount of trial and error I gotta do to get a decent looking tree, but it's better than nothing. And would you look at that, we have trees, but that wasn't the hardest part. The trees looked a little out of place as is, so I tried adding a little darker shade of green underneath them, but for some reason, the code for it would just break between chunks. So I'm and I hopped in a call oh. again to figure out how to fix it. And let me tell you, with his emotional support, it really felt like I could fly to the moon. What the... Uh, yo, I am, why is the biome color not changing in this chunk specifically? Can you screen share? Yeah, yeah. Seems like there's something wrong with your code. Yeah, what, what do you think I do? I would just give up if I were you. What? And just like that, we did it. Yes, it took a while for such a small detail, but I honestly think it goes a long way. On a side note, with the tree library, I also added some dead trees to the lava planet. Lastly, for our final planet, I just had to add a planet from my favorite childhood show, Dragon Ball. I mean, bro, look, look at this shit. Look how hype this is. Dude, I got the Dragon Balls, bro. I got the Dragon Balls. Planet Namek. Namek has a good amount of rivers mixed with its landscape. So I started off trying to code that with the tables from earlier. Afterwards, I spent a good chunk of time picking out the right colors for a custom biome to fit the whole Planet Namek vibe. Sooner or later, we're also gonna have to add these little boogers. Alive boogers. Is that, would that be a Namekian slur? Then I added some big hills that occasionally appeared, but I wasn't really happy with the block transition underneath them. So I did struggle to transition the whole yellowish color rocks to dirt blocks, but when I put packed mud in between, it looked pretty solid. And finally, the trees. <sighs> Boys, the, tr the trees were just so difficult. I literally made a line and a sphere. Light work. <laughs> That's too corny. Jesus Christ. So far, I think Namek is probably the cleanest looking planet I've made. It's almost like a culmination of all the terrain generation things I've learned these past few months. So it's kind of cool to see the improvement between my planets, which makes me realize now that I'm looking back at my other planets, they seem kind of mid. But if you want to check out the planets in game for yourselves, I actually pre-generated them for download on my Patreon. So feel free to check it out. So what do you say when the video is over? Guys, I think Mochi wants you to subscribe, right Mochi? Yeah, subscribe, goddammit, you f